Okay, in this tutorial we're going to demonstrate how to pick up where we left off and make our post form insert the information into the database. So we saw here we got to a point where we could select a section, write a headline, write a teaser, and write the post in the body text. And when we hit post, right now it just uh, prints the array of the values that were posted in the form. So what we need to do now is we need to get into our area where our print R is. And what we need to do first is that we need to turn all the values that have been posted into variables. So what we want to do is we're going to single lights uh, single note, single line notes mode out that print R, and you'll see now if I refresh this page, my uh, my array oop, didn't save the page, so my array should go away. And so let's get inside here underneath this print R that we uh, done. And the first thing that we want to do, we want to create variables and reference the the uh, form values out of there. So you can see here I have a section name, I have a story headline, story teaser, and story text. So I'm going to go create variables for those that we can reference later and then reference those. So what we're going to do is we're going to do create a variable. The first one was section and we're going to make that section equal to the value that was posted in the form. So we're going to do the post value. And then what we're going to reference is section. Now I'm going to double check to make sure that <coughs> these values here match what's in my form element. So I'll come down and look and it is section. <coughs> so I'm going to do story headline equals post and we're we'll do story headline oops this typing this morning we're we'll gonna do story teaser equals the post value that had been posted last variable is story text equals the post value and we want story text so what that's done <clears throat> for every value that has been posted the value that for each form field that has been posted is now bundled into this variable so what we can do next is we can just start testing these variables. So if I echo <coughs> echo section, and since it's not a string value, I can just echo the variable. And if I refresh the page, we see news. If I test it with story headline and refresh the page, you see it's echoing my headline. And I'm just going to check all of them for troubleshooting reasons. Save that. Refresh that. And there you see it's now echoing the story teaser. And now let's echo the story text. Just to make sure everything is being passed and all the variables are working. And they are working as well. So I'm going to single notes mode out that line. Now the next thing we need to do, to typically do, <coughs> So I'm just going to leave that echo there, so if I ever need to troubleshoot any variables. So I'm going to go down to a new line. And what I need to do is write a conditional that checks to see if there's any magic quotes problem. Uh, now what this means, you'll notice that uh, as you've been working, that there's this difference between single quotes and double quotes. And I'll explain this more in class uh, when I go over this area, so I've already explained this. But what the get magic quotes does, it takes care of uh, the 
hyphen. I'm sorry. The quotation problems that can occur from single and for some for competing uh, single quotes and double quotes. So we're gonna do get magic quotes GPC. And that's a function in PHP. So I'm gonna create my conditional, and inside there, what I want to do is that I'm gonna create these variables again, recreate these variables after running them through this other function, and it's the add slashes function. So this is the syntax I'm looking for. So section equals add slashes, and then we have a variable, and we see we want it to be a section. I'm going to close that variable. So I'm going to do the same thing for all the rest of the variables. Now I want to point out that if you have other variables that you're passing in a form, you should run this, run those variables, create the variables first, and then run them through the add slashes. <coughs> so let me finish this teaser equals add slashes story teaser and in the last variable story text this is primarily the one that's the most important actually any of the ones that might have potential single quotes or double quotes in it in the copy itself that's what we need to run through the add slashes <coughs> story text so we've got all four variables run through. There's nothing really to test at this point, but I'm going to refresh the page, and you see how since I turn off the echo statement for the story text, it's blank again. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to create a little script of code that checks to see if to see if those forms have been filled out. So I'm going to write another, yet another conditional, if, and what I want to do is I'm going to say if those values have not been posted, uh, we're going to create a little script that tells people they forgot some values. So in other words, we're creating a form that requires all form fields to be filled out. Now this makes sense for us because when we created our tables, uh, we've set those columns as null values. So if we tried to post the form element without having values in the form fields, my SQL would say, would say no. So we're just going to create a simple little checker that lets uh, the posters know that they missed a form field. Now you can get really advanced on this, uh, as you've probably seen on websites, and we're not going to worry about that right now since we're posting our own stuff. So what I've done say the saying that is if there, this exclamation means negation. So, and if you remember that from chapter one, so if there is no section value or there is no story headline value, oh, I forgot my exclamation point. And I'm going to do that for all the values. <coughs> so, story teaser. In the last or statement, those double hashes there right here are the is the or statement. <clears throat> you remember that from chapter one as well. And we're saying if there is not a story text value, then I'll go ahead and close that conditional, open the curly braces, and inside the curly braces, uh, let's go ahead and add a statement that says. And this time we, it is a string value, so we're saying you have not entered values for one of one or more of the fields. Hit the back button to correct. So let's take a look at what that does. <clears throat> and it seems that I have a code problem with my code. And 
I'm not seeing where my problem is. So if I'm going to open this up a bit more so I can see. So I'm saying if there is no section or it, or there is no story headline or there's no story teaser or no story text, uh, we need to echo that statement. You have not entered the values. Hit the bat button to correct. And I'm not sure why that's giving me an error. So let's just try this. Echo. So I'm going to change my area of Mr. Field. Hit back button to correct. Now I need a semicolon. <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and test this form. So I'm going to hit the back button and I'm going to refresh my page here. And so now if I just try to submit one, just news, and I go down and hit post story you see it's telling me I've missed a field now I could make this really complex and tell people which field exactly they missed but uh, for the sake of what we're trying to do right now that's something that you would add after the fact to create a more uh, a, a better user experience for those people that are posting these values so I'm gonna go back and you see if I go ahead and enter these values now so I've added values for all the four fields and now if I hit post story, it's going to be blank so we can go back to our code. <coughs> okay, so the first thing that we need to do, uh, we saw how we echoed that section. And let's go ahead and do this. Let's echo section. And I'm going to take that single line notes mode out. And I'm going to refresh the browser. You see, now, in our MySQL table, in the the uh, section IDFK, it's not going to accept uh, string value, this word news. So what we need to do is we need to turn news into its primary key. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the database and we're going to run a selection to gra uh, select query to grab the primary key value for the, whatever section value is posted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Actually, I can go down in my code because I already have the, the database connection uh, query connected down here. So I'm going to copy. Uh, actually, I'm going to copy all this right here for now, and we're going to make some modifications. So I'm going to paste that up here after my little conditional that checks to see if all the form fields were entered, and I'm going to tab this out back to get it in alignment. So my connection is the same, but my query is going to change. So this time I'm going to do select all from sections where section in the column in the sections table equals, and what we want to we want to only grab the value for uh, the section variable. So what I want to do is create a double quote. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. And then I want a single quote. And I can explain this if you're curious after class. Actually what I want to do is we need to do single. Uh, I'm going to change this one here to a single quote. This will be a double. That's a single then and then a period. And then I can type in section, and then a single, then a double, then a single again to clear out the... So pay attention to this syntax here. This is the syntax for a string value, uh, this double quote, and then if we'll do something different when we're doing IDs. So this should query the section and then pull me the values. Now I need to... Remember I had this while down in my code, so I'm going to delete that. So now it's just that. I'm going to add a semicolon. And then what I want to do is I need to create a variable to hold this, the section ID. So I'm going to create section ID equals uh, the variable row right here. And, and what we're going to pull out of there is the story ID, sorry, section ID. 
And then what we're going to do now is we're going to echo that for troubleshooting reasons to see if we actually retrieve the correct variable. So if I refresh the page now, we're going to see news is still being echoed from up there. And then the story ID for news is actually two. I'm not going to open the terminal and show you that. So I'm going to single line notes mode out this section that's being echoed. And I'm going to single line notes mode out this echo for section ID. Now if you have other foreign keys in your table, you would just modify this query. If you're in that situation, just ask me and I will explain it to you. And then we would create multiple variables for whatever IDs we're trying to retrieve back. So once we have that, we're ready to actually run our query that inserts <coughs> that inserts all the values into the stories table. So what we need to do is we need to copy these three lines of code. <coughs> we're going to paste those in. And this time we're not running a select query, we're running an insert query. So this is going to get a little tricky because this is the first time you all have used PHP variables to do an insert query. So this is what it's going to look like. So we're going to, it's going to start out just like it does in MySQL. So insert into stories. And then we identify our columns that we're going to use. And our columns that we're going to be using are section ID FK. Then we're going to do story headline. And you notice I'm typing the exact names of the columns in the stories table that will be populated. So we have story headline. Then we have story teaser. Then we have story text. Now, even though we're, we only have those four values we're working values we're working with, we know from looking at our table that we need to populate the story published column. So I'm going to close that. Then we type values. Remember, this is just the syntax for the insert uh, query that you all run in the terminal. And now in the values in these areas, we need to start adding uh, the variables from PHP we've created. So the first one is an ID. So uh, in the section IDFK column, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a single quote and then a period. And then we're going to do sec, whoops, we need to echo, uh, not echo we need to reference the section ID variable. So we're going to type section ID, period, apostrophe, comma. So that took care of that one column. Then we do our story headline. Now these are string values, so we're going to need that double quote, then a single, then a period. And we're going to go ahead and do story headline, period, single, double, quote, and then comma. And I'm going to actually copy and paste this uh, little sequence here I've got going. So I don't have to retype the whole thing. So I'm going to paste in, change this to story teaser. And then I'm going to paste in the last one. I'm going to remove this last comma. Oop, not just yet. I'm actually going to leave that comma. And then I'm going to change this to story text. And this is, this is the area you're going to start finding a lot of errors. So really pay attention to what you're typing. And we still have to populate this last column. Instead of putting in a value, we're just going to run the current timestamp. And I'll explain that uh, in class if I haven't already. So then we need to terminate the quote. And we've got no errors. So then this line will run this connection. It's going to use the same database connection variable up there. <clears throat> so we don't need to connect again in this area. And then we take the value and we enter it into, uh, actually we don't need this line uh, what we because we're not going to actually work with in PHP the result of that insert. So all we're going to do is we're going to type result and oh, we already, we've already got our result. So what we're going to do to see if that, if the result has a value. So we're going to say if the result query exists. So what will happen, if there's an error in here, we, this result variable won't be created. So what we can do with this conditional here is we're saying if there is a result, 
we're going to echo the story has been added to the database and then a semicolon and then we'll come down here and write it else to, to tell us if something went wrong uh, so we're going to say echo uh, not added to the database So that's really all we need. So all we have left to do is check to see if this query, if this uh, section that we've modified now that actually posts the values that have been posted <coughs> into our table to create a new row in the stories table. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to fill in. I'm going to refresh this page actually so we get a clean load. So I'm going to go ahead and select the news section. I'm going to write a headline, uh, cat bites child, except I've misspelled bites, there we go. I'm going to add, uh, this is the teaser text, I'm going to say this is the body text. And so I'm going to scroll down. And if I hit post, we have a problem. It says it's not added to the database. So we basically we got all the way, all this code is working right up until this point. So I've got a problem. Oh, and I maybe see it already. So this is where it gets tricky because I think the problem that we're having is with my uh, query. So I do need to open terminal. This will be helpful because I can show you how to troubleshoot this. So I open up the terminal terminal and I'm going to log in. It's trying to connect to the MySQL, I mean sorry, to the Gaylord CMS server. I'm going to launch MySQL. enter my password and I'm going to use Krug and what I want to do now is describe <coughs> stories so I have story ID section headline section IDFK that's good insert into stories that's the name of the table we're inserting the section IDFK story headline story teaser story text and story published and then we have our values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually going to copy this uh, area right here for the moment, and I'm going to change the value. So I'm going to copy that. So if I if I fix the error, and what I want to do now is I just want to enter just normal values, just the test to make sure where the error is. So I'm just going to insert section ID two. I'm going to change this headline to test but it needs to be string values oh, those need to be double quotes in this setup I need to take teaser to say teaser and I'm going to change text to text so now I'm actually kind of creating a situation that's identical to uh, to when we're working in the terminal to see if there was just something slightly wrong so I can actually take this now and run this in the terminal. And if I hit semicolon, oh, and there's my problem. It's saying that it's an unknown column current timestamp, and that is odd. So that that is what was causing this current timestamp. That is what was causing. Oh, and I see the problem right now. I'm missing the letter S. <laughs> so what I need to do is I need to command Z so it pastes back uh, all my elements that I had there. Let me, oh, I went back a little bit too far. Oh, I need to close that string value. Okay, so now I've got my, and all I have to do is fix this S. So now if I go back and I refresh the browser, remember it retains the values that have been posted, and if I hit continue, the story has been added to the database. 
If I go look at my stories table, you see now I have four stories and the date corresponds. And so we can test that again. Let's do politics. Uh, this is another headline. This is another teaser. This is another instance of body text. So if I go down, post that form, the story has been added to the database, and if I click on stories, you see there is the story. So in the next tutorial, in the next class, we're going to work on the delete function. And then in the last class, we'll probably work on the delete function, and then we'll start building our update function. And so by the end of next week, we'll have all our back end done. And that concludes this tutorial.